Hello, sports fans. Welcome to the Oklahoma Sports Report. I'm Rick Heath. With me, Al Eschbach. And we are at Bar Chichetti's in Deep Deuce, Oklahoma City. A great, unique restaurant bar here at Bar Chichetti. Great food, great service, and a great bar at Bar Chichetti in Deep Deuce here in Oklahoma City. Al, the Baylor Bears come to town on Saturday. Um, and you know what? Al, the mighty have fallen. It's not even on national TV. No, I mean, think about it. Baylor was picked to win the Big 12 by the media. Uh, they've been a disappointment. And Oklahoma, obviously, was picked second by the Big 12 media. And they've been a disappointment. Yeah, you know, so it's on ESPN Plus. So unless you have subscribed to ESPN Plus or on your tablet or whatever. Uh, although I think I, I think Brent Venable's happy. It's a 2 o'clock game. Yeah, it is a 2 o'clock game. So that's good for the sport, for the fans, and for the... Uh, uh, the vendor, vendors and merchants in Norman. Well, and most it's for good for recruiting. Yeah, because they got a lot of people coming in. You can bring them people in with the two o'clock game. You bet. You bet. Anyway, should be an interesting game. Baylor under Dave Aranda, um, a well-coached team. Anyway, as you said, disappointment to this point, but still a dangerous team coming in. Yeah, the they're tough. Early. I mean, they're going to be not quite as good defensively as Iowa State. But they're going to be better offensively. I mean, their their defensive line is really good. Uh, they had a nice win going to uh, Texas Tech uh, and dominating them. So it'll it'll be it'll be a very tough game. You only OU's only favored by three points. You know, and here's the thing about it: OU's got a great record in November, and this will be a test to start November. So we'll That's, see we'll see if the Brent Venables era can continue that November run. They're 41 out of 43 out of the last 43 games in November win. So we will see. Unfortunately, they lost the Baylor last year in November. Yeah, exactly. Unfortunately, they got, they're 0 for 1 on that deal. Hey, we are at Bar Chichetti here in Deep Deuce. Come by and have a part of the great brunch at Bar Chichetti. Sunday's 11 to 2. It's a great place for a Sunday brunch here at Bar Chichetti. Oh man, dude, I really wish I could make that. Um, it's National No Pants Day, and that'd be kind of inappropriate. We actually just had gas station sushi, and you just don't want to chance that. We're going to be running tornado drills, like tornado drills all day. I have tickets to see Kenny Rogers. He's what? Tornado drill, tornado drill. Your friends are tired of coming up with excuses. Two Fellows Moving Company, saving friendships since 1996. Okay, sports fans, you know, we do the Thunder Weekly each week, but there's a lot of things I like to support that are Oklahoma products. I like to go around and do shows from Oklahoma businesses, but one of the businesses I want to talk about is Prairie Wolf Distillery, now Wander Folk Spirits. Wander Folk Spirits distilled out of Guthrie, Oklahoma. Great line of spirits. They have Wander Folk Gin, Wander Folk uh, vodka and Old Moses uh, bourbon. All of these are quality products uh, and they're distilled right here in Oklahoma. So if you come to like Cohiba Lounge, ask for a Wander Folk uh, gin and tonic or ask for a Wander Folk vodka and tonic or a club special. It's getting where you can get that now. It's getting warmer. Uh, a vodka club special made with Wander Folk vodka. Great selection and you're supporting Oklahoma businesses. So support Oklahoma business, ask your favorite restaurant or bar to carry Wander Folk Spirits. EDS Paintless Dent Repair is your one-stop shop for auto body repair. Whether it be from hail damage, dents, scratches, or even glass replacement and repair, we can accommodate all your needs. Locally owned and operated since 2005, EDS Paintless Dent Repair is here for you. Give us a call at 405-476-1763 or go to edspaintlessdentrepair.com. At Laser Light Skin Clinic, our most popular treatment is now more affordable than ever. Right now, you can save up to 50% on Cool Sculpting, the number one choice for non-invasive fat reduction. Our flexible treatment plans allow you to choose the option that is perfect for you. Focus on a single problem area or revive your life with a fresh new you. These are real results. For your personal cool sculpting consultation, call Laser Light Skin Clinic today. A new you awaits. And welcome back. Oklahoma Sports Report from Bar Chichetti. Alice Beck, Rick Heath with you. 
And Barchichetti, what a great menu they have here. It's a very eclectic menu. It's a new look on some French, old, old favorites of French cuisine and, and a great bar featuring Wander Folk Spirits here at Barchichetti, part of the Wander Folk group of, of uh, restaurants. And it's always a great place to come for lunch, I mean, excuse me, for dinner or for brunch. Out. What a difference a healthy Dylan Gabriel makes to OU's offense. Oh, it's night and day. My goodness. Uh, maybe, I don't know if a quarterback meant so much because the difference of who the backup is at this stage. So, uh, yeah, it, it's... They uh, have a backup? I'm sorry. I didn't know they had a backup. I'm so, I, 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 I don't mean to make light of it, but, yeah, the way they, the backup look at Texas is not a backup. No, but, but no. But you're right. You know, the difference between the starter and the backup is so vast. I don't know of another. Uh, I mean, just look at the difference between Kansas State's 13 quarterback okay, yeah. and OU's backup. There's no there's no comparison. Kansas State's 13 quarterback, so much better. Well, and, and Gables, you know, is he Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray, J, or J, Jalen Hurts, or Caleb Williams? No. But he's a good college quarterback. You know, and he's, he's solid, he's smart, he knows Levy's offense. Doesn't turn the ball over. Doesn't turn the ball over. So all of that is coming into into uh, effect. And you weren't able to really see it when he, you know, before he got hurt. And now it's starting to come to fruition. It's a good offense. It wasn't, it wasn't a great offense against Iowa State. Got to get Marvin Mims going. Well, yeah, that's what we're going to do, talk about in just a moment. But against the number one defense that Iowa State had at home, they did just enough to win in a convincing fashion. Yeah, I mean, it is. It's a good win. That's a most points Iowa State's lost this year. That's how close they've been of being good. So and it's a nice win. they got 182 win. yards rushing, and Iowa State would only give up 105 a game. So that's good. Eric Gray looked good. He got nicked up a little bit. You know, Dylan Gabriel was only 15 to 26 for 146 yards, but still, they, they did enough to win the game, and they look so much better, more cohesive doing it. Yeah, and they got some momentum now. You know, they, they've won two straight games. You got four left. You may favorite every game you got left. Uh, doesn't mean you're going to win every game, but you need to keep the momentum going. You need this win Saturday. Yes. Brett Venables at OU needs this win Saturday against. All right, so let's talk about some of the keys to it. Number one, you just mentioned. Marvin Mims has got to get involved. Oh, they got to mean. Well, he, they tried to get him involved, and he played his worst game probably ever. Not, not only at OU, but probably ever. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't dropped. Now, the first pass would have been taken back anyway because of holding, apparently, but uh, oh, he was out of sync the whole game. Yes, he just never was there. So they got to get him involved. And, you know, hey, Jeff Levy's smart. He knows what's going on. He knows hey. Mike Mims is his guy. He's got to get him involved. Jeff Levy is one heck of an offensive coordinator. Yes. I am impressed with what yeah. he does. All right, and so now you got to get you got to get Marvin Mims involved. Okay. All right, and then the second thing is uh, you got to you got to continue that that offensive line attack on the defense. In that you got to get some rushing yards. Yeah, and that means Eric Gray gets about three quarters of the snaps. Yeah. Because he is a difference maker. He is. He's got. You know, get him a hundred yards yeah. plus. Well, look at his yards per carry to the other running backs there. He leads the Big Twelve in yards per. Well, carry. go uh, into a week ago, he's leading the country. Yeah, six point eight yards per carry. So, yeah. And leads the Big Twelve, and and. And so you, they got to get it. So number one, get Marvin Mims involved. Number two, make sure Eric Gray gets his carries and gets his yards. Number three, no turnovers. Yeah, I mean, you do that, you would think that could be the recipe for a win. It should be. It you should know, be. It should be. And, and it gives them every chance to. Now, depending on what the defense does, and you can't do anything about that from the offensive side. But, you know, if Dylan Gabriel passes for 200 yards or even near that, and you get 150 yards rushing, it should be enough You should to be win to win. Really, I totally agree you with know, that. And, and, you know, here's the thing that, that I want to talk about is OU is number 122nd out of 131 times of possession. Does that mean anything? Not always. But in this particular team, it means that they're keeping their defense out on the field way too long. And so I think they need to improve that time of possession a little bit more to keep that defense. The, the only problem with that is they play much better offensively going fast. 
Well, they do. They, they do. But you know, the last, that, that, Iowa State, they didn't. They didn't pay too much pace. They didn't play too much pace. So anyway, we'll watch all of those aspects and see if they do contribute. And if they do, you heard it right here between Al Eschbach and Rick Heath. We got it lined out. Did Jeff Levy just listened to us? No. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That might make it worse. Anyway, we are at we are at Bar Chichetti here in Deep Deuce, having a good time with all the folks here at Bar Chichetti. We'll be right back. The painting professionals at Ray the Painter are committed to providing all of our customers excellent service and attention to detail. Since we started in 1991, Ray the Painter serves the entire OKC metro area. We do interiors, exteriors, residential, and commercial work. The experts at Ray the Painter offer custom finishes and glazes for cabinetry and woodwork, as well as spray, brush, roller, and trowel techniques to get the perfect look for your project. For a free estimate, call 405 605 3563 or visit us at paintokc.com. Let me tell you about a new Mexico Mexican restaurant brought to you by the same people here that have Bar Chichetti. That's right, El Coyote is a new Mexican restaurant. That is from New Mexico style food. It's a great new restaurant by the same people that bring you Bar Chichetti. You gotta try it. 925 West Britain Road in Oklahoma City. New Mexico Mexican food style. You'll love it. It's open every night. Uh, it's on B Britain Road. Go by and try it. You'll love the favorites of New Mexico style Mexican food. You can't find it anywhere else in Oklahoma City. So go to El Coyote, the same people that bring you Bar Chichetti. Okay, we have a special guest here today of the Oklahoma Sports Report. Mariah Calhor of Calhor Real Estate Group, correct? Cal Calhor Group Realty, but it Group works. Group Realty, one of those, one of those. <laughs> anyway, the Mariah, Mariah Calhor. Um, it is a, uh, right now is a great time to be in real estate because there's lots of things going on. There's a lot going on. I will tell you, the last few years has been very different, challenging, very unknown, but I think we're finally walking into the season where things are gonna kind of level out. Sellers are kind of losing a little bit of their leverage and buyers are having the opportunity again to actually negotiate. So buyers coming in have a little bit more uh, leverage with yeah. price moving. Yes. And buyers, I mean, and sellers still have a good market. They do. They just may not have been the top side right now. Correct. And it may not be the feeding frenzy everybody was after. I mean, it was wild, but now we're kind of getting back to that normal flow, steady pace, and I can breathe. The realtors can breathe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the sellers are going, okay. Okay, we can still do this. Um, the, uh, you know, all of the interest rate moves, how, yes. are, how is that working? I will tell you, interest rates are going up. I think they're kind of getting up into that six and seven range. I don't see a problem with that. I know most people who are used to that two and three, they're kind of like, oh my gosh. But I will tell you, and maybe you know this, interest rates once upon a time were up in like 18 and 19. So when we hear six and seven, I'm not worried. I, I'm comfortable with it. Well, you know, and, it's, and if you really look at it over a 30 year fixed, we're talking, you know, a, a few hundred dollars over Correct. a year's period of time. Right. When you break right. it down on a daily basis, it may be only a dollar or two a day. And you can always refinance. Yes, and, and then you can always bring it back down when yep. interest rates are more favorable. Right. And if you need any more information and the expert opinion of the expert, Mariah Calhor of Calhor Group Realty. Group yep. Realty. <laughs> Give them a call and they will find out. Or your Facebook page. Yes, anywhere. You can Google me and you'll find me and I'll help you out. There you go. Yeah. Mar Mariah Calhor of Calhor Realty Group. Oh man, dude, I really wish I could make that. Um, it's National No Pants Day and that'd be kind of inappropriate. We actually just had gas station sushi and you just don't want to chance that. We're going to be running tornado drills, like tornado drills all day. I have tickets to see Kenny Rogers. He's what? Tornado drill, tornado drill. Your friends are tired of coming up with excuses. Two Fellows Moving Company, saving friendships since 1996. Okay, sports fans. You know, we do the Thunder Weekly each week, but there's a lot of things I like to support that are Oklahoma products. I like to go around and do shows from Oklahoma businesses. But one of the businesses I want to talk about is Prairie Wolf Distillery, now Wander Folk Spirits. Wander Folk Spirits distilled out of Guthrie, Oklahoma. Great line of spirits. They have Wander Folk Gin, Wander Folk uh, Vodka, and Old Moses Bourbon. All of these are quality products 
uh, and they're distilled right here in Oklahoma. So if you come to like Cohiba Lounge, ask for a Wander Folk uh, gin and tonic or ask for a Wander Folk vodka and tonic or a club special. It's getting where you can get that now. It's getting warmer. Uh, a vodka club special made with Wander Folk vodka. Great selection. And you're supporting Oklahoma businesses. So support Oklahoma business. Ask your favorite restaurant or bar to carry Wander Folk spirit. And welcome back. Rick Heath, Al Eshback from Bar Chichetti, where they feature Wander Folk Spirits. That's right. Wander Folk Spirits is still in Guthrie, Oklahoma, a great Oklahoma-based company. Wander Folk Spirits featured here as well as the other um, restaurants that the deep, uh, excuse me, that Bar Chichetti owners have here. And it's great, they have great vodkas, gin, Old Moses bourbon, and, and lots of others. Great, great spirits here at Bar Chichetti, courtesy of Wander Folk Spirits. Out, the OU defense is still a work in progress. It showed signs of being more cohesive at Iowa State. Um, and especially because they came up with three interceptions. Um, they held Iowa State to only 62 yards, or excuse me, 66 yards rushing and they look like they had a better idea of what they wanted to do. Yeah, Iowa State's a bad offensive team, the worst in the Big 12. But with that said, anytime you only give up one touchdown in the game, okay, who you play it. That's pretty good. I like the pressure they got on the quarterback. They weren't getting beat long uh, uh, on the secondary. Uh, uh, and they got the three interceptions. They, and they got the three interceptions. So uh, encouraging is a word I... I, I I'd say about the performance. It was encouraging. It's, it's, it's more to build on now. If yes. they can. Okay. And, and, but to build on it, they did a good job of holding Iowa State in check. Now, uh, Richard Reese, the running back, freshman running back for Baylor, is second only to Erie Gray in rushing the Big 12. So that'll be a big challenge right there. Because if they can shut down the rushing attack, it puts a lot more pressure on uh, on yeah, the it, offense. It starts right there, stopping the run game. There, there's no doubt about it. And uh, again, I thought the linebackers played better in this game. I thought Stutzman got beat on that one touchdown, then came back and got the interception. Uh, Deshaun so White seemed to be Deshaun really White played really well. well. He played, played really well. He was all over. Yeah, you yeah. Know, and making some very, very good. And they got Woody Washington back at corner where he just uh, belonged because, because Billy Bowman, Bowman was playing. Billy Bowman didn't play. He played about, what, uh, 60%? For, yes. 60% of the yes. snap, which, what, with his injury, that's pretty good. So he should be up to 80%, you know, something like that against Baylor, which, you know, when you can get your guys back in the places they're comfortable, it makes all the difference. It makes all the difference. They're not just thinking of what they got to do. They can yeah. just react. And they can play free. You know, to me, that makes the difference when you can play free and, and you're still in position. You know, so, you know, and it, it will help against Baylor if they can get some turnovers. Okay. Get, get turnovers and get pressure to quarterback. They have to have that. You know what? And, and you and I were talking earlier about that four-man front. The four-man front OU is putting up there for, on defense has more... Uh, getting more pressure, getting more, you know, their, their and, containment, too. And, and, and Brent Venables they, they dialed up a lot of blitzes. They did. You know, and they, you know, yeah, they did. They got more pressure. Now, they may not say they did, but, but they, they did. did. Yes, there, they there's did. no doubt. They did. You know, and like you said, Stutzman, Stutzman leads the team and tackles for loss. That's, you know, that means they're putting pressure upfield, upfield, getting upfield and getting into the quarterback. You know, and as long as they can stay in their lanes and not let that quarterback get outside. And, and not let the receivers get, get by you like yes. we've seen. You know, and for the most part, they've done that this year. Yes. For the most part, they have kept the receivers in front of them. You know, except in the Texas game and the, that one. Texas and TCU. Yeah, that, the, those are the ones that they were just having to grab and hold and move around. But they, they've, they've shown some improvement since then. And they won't face another uh, offense like TCU. No, 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 not even close the rest so, of the way. So that, that'll be key. So keys are, keys are shut down the running game, get some turnovers if you can, 
put pressure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well said. If you can do that, you're in good shape. So Ted, who, who needs Ted Roof when you got it, right? <laughs> I mean, we're just, oh, we're, we're gonna write this up, send it in to him. I'll email him tonight. <laughs> hey, we are at Bart Chetty here, at Deep Deuce in Oklahoma City. A great place to come. Bart Chetty with a wonderful uh, menu and bar options all available here at Bar Chichetti on 2nd Street in Deep Deuce. We'll be right back after this. And welcome back, Oklahoma Sports Report. Al Eshbach, Rick Heath, here at Bar Chichetti, a great place here, featuring wander folk spirits uh, at the bar. If you're looking for a great spirit to have, wander folk spirits, if your rest, favorite restaurant or favorite liquor store, it's so not carrying Wanderfolk spirits. Ask them to, because you will enjoy it. Anything made with Wanderfolk spirits is better for it. Al, we're uh, in the fourth segment of this show, and we haven't mentioned the most important part of OU's victory on Saturday against Iowa State. That's special teams. And that's so important. People don't talk enough about it, how important it is. It, 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 they were so good in every area. Hunt and Schmidt, the fake field goal was a thing of beauty. Well, they, Zach Schmidt, the kicker, scored the touchdown, kicked the extra point. Had the oh, first 13 points. Yeah, and, and kicked two field goals. He scored all 13 points yep. in the first half. Yeah. The kicker. <laughs> and the punter threw the touchdown pass. It just shows you how important special teams can be. Yeah, and, and Michael Turk, the punter. I mean, all game long, he either pinned them down deep with a pooch kick or he boomed them from out of the end zone, 60, 60 70 yard punts. He's going to be putting on Sundays. Yes, he will, because I mean, he's got the leg for it and he knows how to play. He's smart <laughs> and he's got three touchdown passes. <laughs> Can't beat that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's on his resume. Great putter. Touchdown pass. <laughs> but what a great, you're right, what a great, uh, you know, part of the team it is. It's so underrated that, you know, here they have the number one punter and Zach Smith who hadn't missed yet. And, and you know, and, and you know what? Field goal. Uh, Turk might have been one of the best guys that Lincoln Riley got in the portal. Yeah, there you go. And he's making a big difference. So that, you know, those special teams, you know, and, and the coaches appreciate them. Maybe not the fans. But the coaches so and their important. teammates appreciate how important the special teams are and how good OU special teams are. Yeah, really good. Really good. Okay, um, there are a couple things. Dave Aranda is bringing his, the Baylor Bears up here. The defense is not what it was, but it's still a formidable. What does Dave Aranda, I mean, he is just a different type of coach. Different type of breed of cat. Yeah, no Did a kidding. great job at LSU with their defense. Uh, came to Baylor last year. I mean, my goodness, uh, you know, they win the Big talk, 12. The first time I heard him talk, I had no idea he was a football coach. Yeah. He's soft-spoken. He's, he's quiet. He, he's he's not, not, not that most coaches aren't well thought out, but he's well thought out, and he, he, he expresses himself unlike most football coaches. Yeah, he's not like Matt Rule, who was there before him, whose personality bubbly. Yeah. He is. Uh, Aranda, and some people say, well, it could hurt him getting a head coaching job. I don't I don't believe that. With, with the job with, he's going to pay resume, he's not going to have that much no, of a problem. No, not at all. Okay, let's talk about the other Big 12 games. Um, Texas Tech at TCU. TCU in the driver's seat for the Big 12 championship. Yeah, they're, they're so good offensively. I don't think they're going to go undefeated. I, 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 I just don't. I think... They got too many. They, they got to. They got to play Baylor yet, and they. Yeah. I, hey, I, hey, Sonny, Sonny's doing such a good job. Oh, did a great job. Such a good job. Tre you know. Tremendous Sonny job. Dykes, I mean, what you know? What he is? He has turned that program into an offensive juggernaut. Yes. You know, which before it was known for defense. Okay, but now it's, it's great. Anyway, uh, so I TCU there, Oklahoma State at Kansas. Golly, after the defeat, defeat in, the, in the other Kansas school against Kansas State, is Sanders hurt enough? I mean, is that going to... Well, if he doesn't play, they're not going to win. That's going to be off the top because Dave, I mean, uh, Daniels is back for Kansas. And he will present... Oklahoma, we talked about the OU defense being bad, which it had been. Uh, Oklahoma State's defense is the worst in the Big 12. 
Uh, total yards per out, game. Out, out. Okay, uh, here's the big one. Texas and Kansas State. Wrong team is favored. I don't know how Texas is favored in this game. I, well, hey, run down as fast as we can, and let's go get money on yeah. Kansas State. It's because of your name is, is yeah. why they're a one-point favorite. Hey, Kansas State, hey. Chris Kleiman, is oh. coach, is he not? Oh, my goodness. Uh, actually, Nebraska should give a call to right now. <laughs> That's who they should be giving to. All right, prediction for OU and Baylor. All right, I'm going to go OU 28-24. I got 31-28. Now, where in the same thing. Absolutely. It's not going to be a high-scoring game. No, no, it's not, not at all. No. It may, may not make it, like you said, it may not make it to 30. Yeah. I mean, but I think, you know, 28-24, 31-28, it's going to be close. It's going to be hard fought. And if OU can win, that's three in a row, you got momentum. Then you got momentum. Hey, that's going to do it for this week's Oklahoma Sports Report. We'll see you next time. For Al Eschback, I'm Rick Heath.